So what Hogwarts house does your favorite Disney character belong in? Today, we're playing at being the sorting hat and deciding. Will it be Gryffindor? Or do they actually belong in Slytherin? Elsa is a bit of a tricky one to sort out, to be honest. Some might be tempted to place her in Slytherin, considering how questionable her motivation seems, but when you really get down to it, she is totally devoted to her sister. And because of this, we would have to place her more with Hufflepuff. Seriously, her loyalty goes to such extremes that she's even willing to isolate herself against the world completely, all to keep Anna safe. Elsa, wait. No, I'm just trying to protect you. Not only that, but she's hardworking and loyal to Arendelle as their queen. I took an oath to always do what's best for Arendelle. But she's willing to give up the throne to Anna in the sequel. Luckily, I know just what that is. So, while studying at Hogwarts, Elsa would definitely do well in a Transfigurations class, seeing as she's already great at bringing plain snow to life. And, of course, she'd have to have her sister Anna there every step of the way. Now, Anna's loyalty to her sister may seem like a total Hufflepuff trait, but she shows off more than enough courage to prove that Gryffindor's red and gold are her true Hogwarts colors. Like, she sets off on an adventure after years of being shut up inside her family's castle, and that certainly takes a lot of courage. I pushed her, so I'm the one that needs to go after her. Like, the girl accepts any icy danger that's thrown her way, all with the goal of saving Arendelle and making sure that her people will have their rightful ruler. So you're not at all afraid of her? Why would I be? And like, seeing how courageous she is, I can definitely see Anna excelling in defense against the dark arts while at Hogwarts. It is not nice to throw people! Whoa, 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 whoa feisty pants. And like, Anna isn't the only Disney princess who wants to be where the people are. Like, poor Ariel. Girl went through a lot. It takes courage to sell your voice to the sea witch and start a completely new life on land, especially when everyone you know is telling you not to. Ariel, what are you doing here with this riffraff? I'm going to see Ursula. So like, Ariel's disobedience towards tradition and intentions of making her own path definitely reminds us of a certain boy who lived. I'm 16 years old. And Prince Eric totally would have been sunk a few times, were it not for Ariel saving his life, like, all the time. All things considered, Ariel is totally a Gryffindor. Like, her favorite class at Hogwarts would definitely be Muggle Studies, seeing as she's already collecting gadgets and gizmos aplenty. One thing in the box? I got 20. Sort of like a certain father of the Weasley family. What exactly is the function of a rubber duck? And speaking of princesses who are dreaming of adventure in the great wide somewhere, Belle's intelligence and creativity may seem to place her in Ravenclaw, but her real defining moment comes when she's willing to sacrifice herself for her father. This moment shows that she has an almost Hufflepuff level of loyalty, but you also have to consider that something like this requires a lot of bravery to do, especially when her capture looks like this. She's so beautiful, man. Well, look at me! Plus, when you consider the one thing that she's, like, always dreamed of, we're saying that Belle is 1000% Gryffindor. She would excel at, like, any Hogwarts class that she tried to take on, but she would especially shine in history of magic, or maybe the study of ancient runes. Really, just anything that requires, like, a lot of reading. Like, is Belle another student who may benefit from a time turner? This is how I've been getting to my lessons all year. She'd most definitely be studying hard alongside one princess who's training to be Sultan. Like, Princess Jasmine is willing to do whatever it takes for her to win, right? Even if it means using herself as a weapon against Jafar. What street rat. And not to mention, the live-action remake builds on her ambition by making it clear that she wants to become Sultan, breaking free of tradition in order to push forward her ambition. I was born to do more than marry some useless prince. And like, her ability to sneak out to the marketplace without being recognized proves that she's pretty cunning and resourceful as well. All of this just has to make her a strong contender for Slytherin House. Jasmine's interest in people and culture suggests that she'd probably ace her history of magic classes while at Hogwarts, but we can also see her being a mean addition to Slytherin's Quidditch team, playing as either a chaser or a keeper against a princess who's definitely 
brave. So Merida's denying tradition by refusing to accept a prince at all. And I'll be shooting for my own hand. And although her stubbornness and tendency towards rash decisions can sometimes get her in trouble, like say the time she turned her mother into a bear, it's not my fault. I didn't ask her to change you into a bear. She's constantly driven by a need to do what's right at the end of the day. Because of this, I'm gonna have to sort Merida into Gryffindor House. I mean, come on, it's even the title of her own movie. She's brave. Merida is definitely the princess that you'd want to find on your Quidditch team, either playing as a beater or a chaser, and she'd discover this passion in flying class, similar to Harry. Now, if only she could find a way to keep all that hair from getting tangled while flying painting, baking, ventriloquy, or like candle making? Is there anything this princess can't do? Like she may be fair enough to roll with the Hufflepuffs, but it's her creativity that makes her a perfect addition to Ravenclaw House. Rapunzel's imagination is what inspires her to break out from Mother Gothel's control and like try to learn about the broader world beyond her tower. Ugh, I wanna see the floating lights. It's her curiosity and willingness to learn about everything that makes her such a good friend to everyone she meets. When it comes to Rapunzel's favorite classic, at Hogwarts. Mm, her ability to get along with Maximus suggests that she'd be like really good at care of magical creatures. Oh, he's nothing but a big sweetheart. But her many talents suggests that she'd just like excel at every subject, right? And seeing how she handles her handy dandy frying pan, she'd even make an excellent beater in Quidditch playing against the savior of China. Honestly, Mulan is another tricky one. She may have disguised herself through most of the movie, which is something of a Slytherin trait and her intense loyalty to her father may even make her a contender for Hufflepuff, but her courage is definitely worth a member of Gryffindor House. Like, she was risking her life if she was discovered. And yet, that still didn't make her pause from taking her father's place in the Chinese army. But like, in fact, she was even willing to go back after everyone had found out her big secret. You said you'd trust Ping. Why is Mulan any different? And like, not only that, but Mulan pushed herself to become the best among her fleet, even when she started out with less fighting experience than like anyone else there. And if those aren't Gryffindor traits, then we don't know what is. So obviously Mulan would be the best in defense against the dark arts class. Like considering she's already proven herself as the woman who saved all of China. That little baby is all grown up and and save in China. But when it comes to potions class, Mulan may just want a bit of help from a certain froggy princess. Like, Tiana is one ambitious gal. She's willing to do whatever it takes to fulfill her dreams of opening a restaurant, right down to kissing a frog. I reckon you want to kiss? She's ambitious and a go-getter, and these are all traits that prove she's a classic Slytherin. Even buying a rundown building of her restaurant won't get her down because she knows that she's resourceful enough to make something out of it. And, and hang up on the ceiling, a big old crystal chandelier. <laughs> her all work all the time attitude may make her come across as cold when you first meet her. Girl, all you ever do is work. But when she considers someone to be a part of her family, she'll be loyal to the end. So Tiana's favorite Hogwarts class might just have to be potions, seeing as it's closest to her passion of cooking and baking. And her least favorite? Definitely transfigurations after the whole frog adventure. We would definitely be interested to see how far she'd go while at Hogwarts. Moana is hardworking and loyal to her people, like a Hufflepuff. But even so, like she's still brave enough to take on Taka alone. And she even stands up to the great demigod Maui. You are not my hero. And because of this, we have to place her in Gryffindor, especially when you consider her strong desire for adventure, which characterizes nearly every moment that she's on screen. Like, girl braves terrible ocean storms and massive shiny crustaceans without once losing sight of her goal. And you will restore the heart. Even Maui's active attempt to frighten her. Don't worry. It's a lot farther down than it looks. And never enough to talk Moana out of doing what she wants. You can do this, sir. And so Moana's love for sailing may just suggest that she do well in Hogwarts' astronomy class, but we could also see her scoring some major points as a beater on Gryffindor's Quidditch team. So what do you think about these sorting choices? Would you agree with my reasons for placing them like I did? Or do you think there's a Hogwarts house that may suit these Disney characters more? Honestly, we'd love to hear your thoughts, so make them heard in the comment section down below, okay?